Good morning, guys. Welcome back to my channel. This is Tanya at Side Gig Crafts, and I am here today to work on some Little Golden Book junk journals with you. I've had several requests on how to open them up and um, and get them started. So that's what I'm going to do with you today. Um, I'm not the first one to do this. I've watched lots of videos and put some ideas together that have worked for me now. Um, so we're going to do this together. I'll show you a couple different versions um, that I've seen. And there's so many people doing it that I'm not going to link my inspiration in the, in, because they all inspired me. And I, there's just no way to go back and, and, uh, and do that. So I want to thank all the people who have done this before me. <laughs> who have shown me some awesome ideas. So, I mean, just using a baby wipe now, these were all thrifted, and um, I just wanna make sure that they're as clean as can be and, um, you know, look the, look the best. So, I'm just using a baby wipe to uh, clean off the, the, the front and the back. And I just picked a couple books that I'm gonna be using. I've got a whole stack that I actually need to do, but I'm just gonna do a couple, um, couple today. Uh, because there's really, I've got three books here. One of them is not a little golden book, but we're going to take it apart too. And um, I'll show you how you can do this with probably any book, really. So this one is not a little golden book, obviously. It doesn't have a little gold trim on it, but I'm going to clean it up. And we're going we're gonna to do it with this one too. This one is actually a Christmas gift for a special little girl and um, who loves rainbows. So let's start with the golden books, okay? Because I know that's what you want to see. <laughs> we all have those little golden books that we're attached to that we, you know, we read a lot when we were kids. And, and, um, and that's what I love about these journals, these little golden book journals, the junk ones, because we all relate to, to different books. You know, there's there's ones that we read over and over and over again. And my idea is that if we're doing junk journals with them, we're loving them all over. You know, these are gonna, I mean, kids will read them and everything, and but this will, it just gives it a new life and uh, puts it back in the hands of the adults that, that really cherish them too. So um, here we go. <laughs> In the little golden books, there's two staples in the binding. There's two, and you can feel them through there, and you can see them. And let me see if I can get up close so that you can see. You can kind of see the indentation. See that right there? That's the staple. And the other one is right there. They're usually pretty worn, and you can see them on the back side too, usually. There's the bumps for, the, for that one, and then on that one too. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our very sharp X-Acto knife, so be careful. This is not a project for kids unsupervised for sure. And we're going to, or what I do, is I'm going to cut just next to that staple. I'm just cutting the paper, the foiled paper on the top on either side of that staple. And then at the very end of that staple. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna very carefully lift that foil up. Now this won't matter so much if you're going to be doing the, um, the fabric binding, but I'm gonna show you how to do the three wing binder to preserve that foil. Because as we know, that little, oh my thing is not tight. Um, the little golden books all have that foil lining on them. And that's how we know that they're little golden books, right? That's one of their special features that makes them so recognizable in our bookshelf. So we're gonna hold, keep that paper on there. Just leave it there, cause we're gonna put it back, okay? And you can keep it so it won't have a big hole in it. All right, and it's pretty easy to do. I mean, you just have to cut into there and then lift it. Okay, make sure it stays on there. Actually, I'm gonna push it, I'm gonna press it down because I don't want it to bend too much when I'm doing the back side. So here we go on the back side. We're gonna do the same thing. These staples look a little bent, but we're gonna go as carefully as we can next to them. And again, do our best to preserve that foil. Come on. 
This one's glued really well. I'm just going to say that. Oh, I messed it up. I'm going to try to keep that. Actually, you know what? This will probably be our fabric covered one. We'll just do that so we don't waste it. Eh, nothing's wasted. I don't know. Here, let's see what we can do, though. All right, and you'll see the staples underneath there. Okay, let's do this bottom one. It is hot here today, here in Alabama. The humidity is outrageous. I'm sitting in my air-conditioned house and I am sweating up a storm. It's cool enough, but it's just ugh, sticky. Okay, I'm gonna pull, keep that that way, oops. Now, I wanna get, I have another X-Acto knife that I'm gonna use. This one's got a broken tip, so I don't mind. But if, if you've got um, a knife or, oh, I know what I can use. This is better. I used this the other day and it worked out really well. I've got a, um, not that, goodness. There we go. Um, this, uh, this is one of my work tools. It's not even sharp, but I think one of my kids <laughs> I think my oldest kid had this in his backpack one time when he came home from school and I snagged it because I didn't want him to have it. <laughs> it's just sat in my drawer since then. That was a long time ago. He's been out of school for quite some time. All right. Um, so I'm just going to put this underneath that staple and bend it up. So whatever tool you've got, be careful because you don't want to break your tools with these staples but just bend the ends of those staples up because we're gonna pull them out from the other side. So the straighter these are, the better, okay? Oops, this particular knife, I gotta go a certain direction or it's gonna fold up on me. It's a piece of junk, but it works. I don't know where he got it. I'm sure one of his friends must have given it to him, but whatever. That was like 10 years ago. All right, and then on this side, we're gonna try to get under that staple carefully so we don't cut up that paper. Okay, just work it up just a little bit because we can get up, we're gonna get a pliers and pull it. Oops, pull that paper back up. This is the hardest part, you guys. The rest of it is easy peasy. All right, just get under there. All right, and then I'm gonna get up a and just pull it out there we go it's a big old staple and then I'm going to carefully put these papers back a little bit so that I don't accidentally tear them off all right once you've got those staples out, I'm gonna throw them away right away because I'm the person that would step on them so these papers are still on there what we're gonna do is you can use um, a glue stick would work fine but I like my barely art glue because it's got the precision tip on it and it dries pretty quickly I'm just gonna glue these back down whether I use this for my um, my ringed binder or my ringed journal or my fabric journal I want those papers to be um, laying flat so that they're not causing any problems so either way you want to glue them down or, I guess if you're doing the um, fabric, you can even cut them off. And it looks like I tore this one a little bit. So this one will probably be my fabric, fabric journal because I damaged it. So, all right, and then, I'm still in frame here, you guys. I apologize if I if I go out of frame. I'm still learning how to use this new setup. I'm gonna hold that down just for a second. All right, so now that we've pulled those staples out, this is all going to come apart. I say that. Ooh, they glued this one in. No wonder it was glued so well. The other one didn't, wasn't glued in. So we will have these usually have two signatures in them. Let's see if this one does too. This one's different. 
Is this, oh, this was in 1975, so they probably started making this one different. Maybe, maybe not. Here we go. All the pages are coming apart just fine. Where's that second signature? This is the second signature. Okay. Oh, I want to make sure I don't ruin it. There it is. All right. So that glue is what kind of got me with those staples. So you'll see that there it comes in two signatures. Now, if you open these up, these are solid pieces of paper. So these are... Some of you may not know what a signature is, so it's full pieces of paper that are folded together. And there's three to four in each signature. We're gonna keep these together just the way they are. We're not gonna do anything with those, okay? Just set them aside. Now you'll see that the binding, this is the foil binding right here. It, when we start sticking pages in here, this is not going to be big enough. Now, some people will actually cut this whole thing off because the, they find this to be flimsy. I don't want to do that unless, hang on a second, hang on a second, what am I thinking here? Nope, I don't want to do that. Either way, whether it's the three ring or the, um, or the uh, fabric binding, I don't want to cut those off because these pages won't be the right size anymore if we cut them out. And then we'd have to cut the pages or fold them and then that's just damaging the book and I don't want to do that so what we're gonna do is this we're gonna carefully I'm gonna take my sharper one because I don't want to mess this up Gosh, you guys my desk is such a mess I was a, a crafting fool yesterday I made so many things and my desk shows it I tried to clean up a little and <laughs> but I've got piles <laughs> just out of camera range so what I'm gonna do is just slice with my X-Acto knife right along the edge of the of the uh, the book back. And if it doesn't come across the first time, do it again. Don't tear it. Okay. There we go. Now we've got a nice clean edge, and the tape is still there. Okay. We're gonna do the same thing on the front cover. Today I'm just going to show you how to take them apart. We'll do the um, the binding part different on a different video because it would just take too long. There's no way to do it all in one without sitting here for hours and hours. And I don't want to do that to you. I know you've all got things to do, including your own binder. So it will take off a little bit of the tape, but that's okay. We've got plenty. It's still there. And it's gorgeous. So that is how you do it the one way. Well, the, the next one's gonna be um, the same way to take it apart. But, actually I don't have to show you how to do that again because we're not gonna actually bind it today. So I don't have to do that one again. So we'll shorten the video by a little bit. Okay, let's do another book. So take it apart this way, set it aside for the next video. We'll be ready to, uh, to do some binding. Now this one, I was looking at and the binding on this one isn't with staples. These are actually sewn in. And I can tell because I can see the stitches in here. So I have not actually done this before on this kind of book. So you're gonna experiment with me and we're gonna go through it together. So I think if I can cut those threads, it should just open up just nicely. So I'm going to put my X-Acto knife in here and I'm trying not cutting into the paper but just cutting into that seam a little bit and just aiming for those stitches. Let's see what we can do. Of course, this one is a Christmas gift if I can get it right. She doesn't know, so if I mess it up, she'll never know. <laughs> All right, let me see. I did get in there a little. Let's see if I can get this. Let me try this again. I'd have to go a little deeper, a little more aggressively. I wonder if... See, I don't want to cut the pages on this one either. This one is going to be... Um, I'm going to use the binder rings method on this one. So I want to be careful not to cut the pages. But I might have to be just a little more daring with my cutting. Uh, I could hear it. Oop. Oh, look at that. I cut a page out. Oh, great. Oh, but I did. Okay, good. 
there we go, we got the binding cut. See how the stitches are in there? This one was sewn in. I wanna to try to preserve the binding as much as I can, just because I need to take it apart and, and figure it out. Oop. I hope mistakes happen. Let's see if I can get it from this edge. Well, that'll do it. <laughs> All right, well, you know, nobody's perfect. I haven't done it before. So let's see what we've got. This side, I might have to cut this one too. I can see the stitches better now. It's laying, oh, wait, wait, wait. Maybe if I work it. Again, I'm trying not to cut the pages, but I might, I might have to anyway. There we go. Interesting how they bound this because one of these pages is actually glued. This is the back. They glued this to the back. So that page is actually the back cover. So I will have to cut that one for sure. There's no way around that. So. My plans may have just been changed a little, which is fine. We're gonna figure this out. We'll get it done. I think the best thing you can do is take your book apart and try not to damage it as much as you can. Let's see what you got. All right, let's see what I got. So that goes there. have to trim these up to be um, to be clean see how it tore so that one page must have been the um, front cover as well let's see what it did to my pages so it looks like I can actually cut the edge of this book because it's not I'm gonna go ahead and pull it because it's not printed all the way to the edge and that way I can take those dots out to the the sewing holes. So I, I'm going to be trimming that up. And I'll do that in a minute. Okay, we're good. So what I'm going to do with this one is weird. Okay. You guys, it's so hot. I just had, um, yeah, it's hot. I'm just going to say that. So if I trim that off, I've actually got room to trim this back. It looks like to take this whole thing off. So I'm gonna do that and I hope that's not a mistake, but I'm going to do that. I'm gonna use my metal ruler. Let's see, I'm right-handed, so I need to kind of go this way, help guide myself so I don't mess it up. And I'm gonna turn my mat too, so it's the wrong way. So there is a crease right here, and I'm gonna follow that crease. It's right next to the stitching. For this one, I'm not gonna use my exacto knife. I'm actually gonna use my box cutter. Except I should probably go straighter to the edge, but actually that worked out fine. Okay, so, no it didn't. I don't like that at all. I have a plethora of box cutters around my house. Working at a grocery store, I bring home probably two or three of them each day. <laughs> I try to put two or three in my pocket in the morning before I go because I leave them all over the store. But um, what happened there? Was that there before? I can't leave that, that's terrible. This is just gonna get shorter and shorter, isn't it? Okay, let's try this again. But I use them so much at work that um, 
it's funny when I when I'm at home and I need to open something I automatically reach for my pocket for my box cutter and at home of course I don't carry one so it's a little humorous but I do keep one in my in my desk drawer because they are useful very useful all right that's gonna have to do um, I'll work with it a little bit but again this one's gonna be on binder rings so this will work out just fine all right let's do the same with this one this is the front cover Let's get that junk out of there. And again, I'm gonna cut on that groove. If it doesn't go through the first time, don't rip it, just cut again. Because you don't wanna cut into that or tear it. You won't be able to put it back. All right, so this is what we've got. And I'm gonna clean up this side too. This one I'm gonna use an X-Acto because I think my X-Acto knife might be a little sharper than that box cutter at this point. This is like a brand new X-Acto knife, so it's doing pretty well. Just clean up that edge. So you'll see this, this book is a little trickier than the golden books. Those are super simple, but you know, we should be able to make journals out of any book. I mean, it's a book, right? All right, so that's pretty cute. So this is what we've got so far. Let me see if I need to clean that one. That one's fine. We've got the front, we've got the back. We're gonna trim these up and I think this is gonna be easiest on my um, my paper trimmer. So give me just a second, I'm gonna step away here. My paper trimmer is right next to my desk. I just wanna make sure those papers are in there just right, so that they're all cut the same. This one looks like it's poking out, I don't know why. Okay, I think that was the one that was glued to the back. Think I'm gonna go ahead. I don't know if I need to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and clip these just to help hold it in place. That's not gonna work. Safety pins aren't gonna work. What in the world? Where did those come from? Uh, let's try the next box. There we go. I'm gonna clip those in place. I'll do the same to this one. Big clips, little clips, just hold it in place. Right back with that paper trimmed, hopefully. Hopefully. Right there. All right, that's pretty good. There's a little bit of stitching on there. Eh, I don't like it. Yeah, it's fine. Again, it's gonna have the binder rings in there if it's not perfect. It's a junk journal. It doesn't have to be perfect. What is perfect anyway? What is, what does that even mean? That's kind of like normal, you know? The word perfect, it's just our idea of perfect. Perfect means it's full of love, full of effort, and it's the best job we can do. So. That's what perfect should be. This one is much better, even with a sharp blade. That one was a little rough, but that's okay. It's still got a little bit of trim on there. I'm okay with that, because it's not gonna show that much. There's gonna be so much going on in this, in this journal. So we've got a cover and we've got pages. So we're on our way. Um, I will show you how to bind this one today because it's quick and easy and I'm there. Actually, I only have one binder ring. I'm going to need to get some binder rings, but you'll be able to see the process. Okay, here's what we're going to do. 
we are going to get our trusty dusty. You guys, if you don't have a crocodile, get one. I, I use this thing every single day. Every single day. I love this thing. Um, it's worth the money, I promise. Sometimes, you know, like even with um, my ATC cards, it just gives such a finished look. It's just, it's gorgeous. It's, it's really cool. And I'm not going to measure... I'm not going to measure these because once I have, I feel like I should put three, three in here just to hold a little better. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go as close to the middle as I can. I'm not going to measure. I don't measure a lot of times, but this looks like it's about center. And then this part punches the holes. So I'm going to go in here and I do want to put them. You can move this plastic for a guide for how far you can put this in. And I think I want to go right about right about there. So that way they'll be at least uniform. And then it'll punch a hole. Look at that. Right through the cardboard. Okay. And then this one looks... Knock that out of there. This one looks about right. And then this one looks about right because my regular hole punch would not be able to punch this. I think I moved that guide. I did. I moved it just a little. Oops. Well, if I didn't before, I did now. Okay. So let's go there. And there's a, a three punch. Okay. Now what we're going to do is use that as a guide for the back cover and I'm just gonna put a little dot in there I'm gonna use a marker or a pen and just put a little dot that way I know where they go and I'm gonna do it again okay my guide tells me how how far in and the hole tells me where to place it there we go guys can see this and I might have to go to dollar the Dollar Tree today and get some binder binder rings oh darn <laughs> is that all I need I don't know all right and then I can do the same with the paper and you know what I did I did mess something up I didn't remind you so you want to make sure that when you do this that everything's in the right direction because if I place these incorrectly and they weren't even if I had done it this way my holes might be different so want to make sure you're doing it the, the up the the same direction like from the top and we're good there so I'm gonna go ahead and mark this one because this should be able to go through all these papers too. If it can go through this cardboard, it should be able to go through the paper. I'm gonna mark this one too while I'm at it. We can just get them all done. Okay. So, go ahead and punch these holes. can't see it if the paper's still in there. There we go. Isn't that amazing? It's perfect. You don't have to worry about the three ring hole punch. You, don't, you can do them all at the same time. It's magical. I love it. This thing is awesome. So worth the money. So worth it. I know they're kind of pricey, but Every crafter should have one of these in their craft room. I'm telling you, I'm telling you now. Now, one of the things I like to do with these, don't need to do it to the pages, but I do want to do it to the cover, is put an eyelid in there. And I've got some different colors. The, the Crocodile actually comes with some of the eyelets, but I got some other ones elsewhere. I, don't, I think I got some on AliExpress. Um, 
different colors and stuff. And I'm going to put an eyelet in each one. I think it's gonna probably help it keep from wearing too soon from the, um, the binder rings and from turning of pages. So I'm gonna put an eyelet in each one of these of the cover. Doesn't that give it such a, a nice finished look though? I really like that. Just give it a little squeeze and it's on there. Look at that, isn't that perfect? Love it, you guys, these are awesome. And then on the back side, let's do it again. And for the pages, you could use, um, what are they called, the, the little donuts that you put around it that help um, so that the pages don't tear. You could do that on each page. I'm considering that. Um, but you don't have to. It's totally up to you. I can't remember what they're called. We always call them donuts. Um, but anyway, so there's that. So we've got all the pages. We've got the front and the back. And then you take your binder clips, and this one's probably too big, but you know, um, I'll get some more. In fact, I only have the one, so then just poke it through. Your pages are all together, makes it super easy. Just put them on there. Oh, you know what? I do have more paper, I do have more binder rings. And close it. You know, she could put enough papers and things in there that it could fill that up. She's got lots of room if she wants to, right? I've got a few. I've got them on other things, but I'm going to take them off and I'm going to use them. Because why not? I can get me binder rings later for another, another day. Is that the same size? And put these back on binder rings. So, yeah. That way I can finish this up. Well, maybe not. Yes, I can. You guys like how I change my mind instantaneously? <laughs> I found two more. Two more. There we go. And it should be easy peasy because the holes are all lined up. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave these. I'm gonna be um, adding a lot of stuff into this into this journal. So I think I'm gonna leave these particular rings on here until I know for sure if I need smaller ones because I wanna put a lot of pages and things in here. So this will open up really nicely. All the pages are in there. i take these clips off. Although it feels really big, but like I said, with a lot of pages and stuff in there, um, it may be just fine. So she'll be able to read the story, maybe learn something about the rainbows. I don't know. She probably knows all the stuff about the rainbows. But that's her favorite thing right now. So she's getting a book about rainbows. And then I'll add papers and different things in here. And I'll take you along for that journey too, because I think it'll be fun. And when she gets this, then she can go back and look and see how we made it. So that's it for that today. I'm um, really rethinking my large rings <laughs> at the moment, even as I say I'm going to leave them. But um, that's all I have for today. So I might have to change those out. Probably by the next video, we'll figure it out. So that's it for today. So we've got the removal of the cover for the Little Golden Book. And if you wanted to do the bind, the, the ringed binder clip or rings, you would do it the same way. Um, and next time I'll show you how to bind this with the fabric binding and the, um, to make it bigger, whiter, so that you can add pages and things into it. So that's it for now, you guys. Thanks for uh, following this little journey and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a few things. 
hopefully my YouTube video watching rampage <laughs> will help shorten some of your time and I hope I was able to uh, clarify some things and show you in a different way that um, you'll be able to uh, not have to do as much research as I did. So thank you so much for watching. If you like my video or like me, like my project, like, subscribe, share, and um, stay with me because I'll be working on these on, on camera and, and show you what how they come along. So I hope you're all having a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.